All right. Uh, awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Jörg Werner. Um, in my lab, part of the research we do is looking at uh, figuring out fabrication methods that are scalable and tunable to make uh, electrode and battery architectures. And we try to understand how the structure of the battery and the electrodes uh, influences the performance of batteries. So we've already seen a few cross sections of batteries in the last couple of talks, so that's fantastic. It can jump right into the primary kind of length scales that we're dealing with here. So this is uh, the five main layers that matter in the batteries that you have. They're typically flanked by two metal foils, which are just there to give you your electronic conductivity, meaning pulling electricity in and out of your battery. And those are typically coated or simply painted on with your active material. So this black and gray here is your anode and cathode material. Those are the materials typically as powders, so that's why they're represented like that here, that store your lithium ions. And during charge and discharge of your battery, these lithium ions go back and forth between these materials. And those two materials, the anode and the cathode, are separated by what is fittingly called a separator. It's typically just a plastic membrane that is electronically insulating to make sure these two things don't touch each other and you don't have any short circuit. Now, your anode, your cathode, as you see here, as well as your separator in a typical lithium ion battery are porous. So they're soaked in a liquid, this porosity. And that liquid contains lithium salt, which allows your lithium ions during charge and discharge to toggle back and forth. Now, there's two key metrics, I would argue, that matter in a battery, especially when we think about things like uh, electronics or electro, uh, electric vehicles. One of them is the energy. How much energy can you put into a battery? And all that is determined by how much material that actually stores the energy is part of your battery. Right? What's the fraction of your charge storing anode and cathode material? So if you want to make a battery with a lot of energy in it, you want to make these two layers here very, very thick and very, very dense. That way you increase the fraction of your energy storing materials and you store more energy per volume or weight. The other important metric, especially for EVs, is how fast can we charge it? And that's dominated by how fast our lithium ions can move back and forth between our electrodes. Now, if you want to make a battery that charges very fast, you don't want very thick electrodes and layers that these ions have to move through. And you don't want to be very dense because they move through the porosity, through that liquid that's in there. So you want thin electrodes and you want very porous electrodes. And that's pretty much the extent right now how we tailor our batteries to an application. High power application like power tools, high energy applications, not really like, like cars because there we want both high energy and fast charging at the minimum. So one of the things we do in my lab is we figure out how we can go from this very disordered and disorganized and not very well-designed architecture of these electrodes to something that really favors mass transport. How can we tune our porosity so that it goes straight from one side to the other so we decrease the torturosity and give the fastest speed for those lithium ions and any kind of thickness that we can do. For that, we've developed a technique that is based on what we've been using for decades for water filtration membranes, a roll-to-roll -roll process, that gives us our electrode architectures with these very straight porous channels. These are of uh, the thickness and areas that we typically find in batteries. And not just can we do that, we're not necessarily interested in spinning out a company to make uh, a specific way of ba uh, battery electrodes, but we can tune those structural parameters. We can tune how many pores we have per surface area. We can tune the shape and the size distribution of these pores. And we can do that over a range of thicknesses from tens to hundreds of micrometers, which is the thickness of typical batteries. And now having this capability, we're looking into together with Sean, for example, how these structural parameters influence our energy density and rate capability of these batteries. To go a step further, we really wanna actually turn the battery uh, structure outside in. We want to leave flatland of multiple layers and turn this whole thing into hierarchical 3D architecture, where we have our three layers that matter for the ion transport, three-dimensionally interdigitated. So no matter how thick we make this battery electrode, the lithium ion diffusion distance can always be on the orders of a few microns, so very, very fast, meaning we can increase our energy by making thicker batteries while not sacrificing rate capability or charging rate. My time is up, but what we do here is really how can we fabricate the same problem as they had with transistors 50 years ago? How can we make things smaller and smaller in three dimension with materials that have to, have, have to fulfill certain functions like ionic conductivity, electronic insulation, no defects, and of course, the correct electrochemistry at the correct sites. Thank you very much.